Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli, back out here in the shop, and I've got another good one for you today, and timely. You know, we're in the spring. Depending on what part of the country you live at, spawn is happening, or it's gonna happen. And spawning fish can be really challenging to catch. But I'm here today to tell you I've got a system and a technique to help you catch spawning bass. And um, man, there's a lot of different baits, a lot of different styles, a lot of different methods to catch spawners. But I'm here to show you one that is gonna change the way you look at it. Um, this bait and this rigging method, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, it drives them nuts. They gotta have it, right? I've fished spawning fish where you're constantly having to change color and size and you're having to modify and alter the way you fish it. This one is pretty simple. It's a single ringing method. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a spinning rod. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a casting rod. Outside of that and a few little hacks I'm gonna show you, it's one bait and one technique that will make those fish bite. So if you're watching, you're saying, man, spawning fish is not my thing. I suck at it. I, don't, I can't do it. I never catch them. They don't eat it. They don't turn on. This is one you got to try, okay? Let's start with the bait. Then I'm going to show you the two ways to rig it. I'm going to show you a couple little hacks, and then we'll show you how to fish it, okay? Here's the bait. I know you've heard a lot of chatter about this bait and you've heard a lot of different rigging options on how to rig this bait. This is the Berkley Powerbait Gilly, uh, and it's a special one. It comes in three different sizes. It comes in a 90, a 110, and a 130. But for this rigging method for spawning fish, we're gonna exclusively use this little size, which is the 90, okay? This is the size 90. And if you look at the 90 gilly, what an awesome, dead on, perfect imitation of a baby bluegill, of a yearling, a, you know, couple year old bluegill. And think about that size bluegill around spawning beds. Dude, they are called nest raiders, nest pests. That's the size of the bluegill anywhere you live. Canada, Texas, Florida, California, Jersey, wherever, anywhere in between Ohio, Midwest. They're the nest raiders that constantly pester those beds. You know, that's the size of bluegill, sunfish, warmouth, that's stealing eggs. And fish know that. And that's why, you know, in this ghillie, I want you to use the 90 size. And again, listen, a lot of ways to rig this one in the 110 and the 130. As a topwater, as a swim bait, on a Carolina rig, as a Texas rig. But I'm going to show you the rigging method when you're using this 90 to catch bedding fish. Okay? So there's the bait. Um, I want to show you this on a spinning rod and on a casting rod because, you know, there's different situations, different times for both. I would tell you this. I use it on a spinning rod when the bite is tougher, when the water is ultra clear, if there's a lot of fishing pressure, a lot of dudes fishing those sets of beds, I'm more inclined to fish it on a spinning rod especially if there's open water. Man, if those fish are bedding and there's nothing for those fish to get hooked on or snagged in, spinning rod's a great presentation. I generally switch to a casting rod with a little heavier line when the water's a little bit more stained or dingy, when there's no fishing pressure, and especially when there's a lot of cover. Right? Listen, bass spawn in open water, 
but a lot of times bass are spawning near cover. I've seen them spawn around lily pads, reeds, a lone stick, you know, gravel, whatever, rocks. And I'm a little more comfortable when there's heavy cover with a little heavier line on a casting rod. So I'm gonna show you both. Let's start with the spinning, okay? Spinning rod, uh, just real quick. This is a seven to a seven and a half foot medium action spinning rod. It's an Abu Garcia Ike series, a 30 size uh, Abu Garcia Revo Ike spinning reel. And my line combination on using this little ghillie for this bed technique I'm about to show you is 10 or 15 pound Berkeley uh, X9 braid. So 10 or 15 pound braid on a 10 to 12 pound 100% fluorocarbon trialing leader. You don't need an extra long leader from a foot to three foot is fine. Uh, but here's the deal. And again, this is, this is gonna be a little bit like um, a broken record because I'm gonna show you, I wanna show you on a spinning and on a casting. Let's start with the hook. Again, on spinning, when I'm fishing at this system, it's more open water. There's not a lot of cover. So because of that, I'm going to use a number one or a one knot. You can use both. A number one or a one knot wacky hook. Okay, a lot of companies make them. Everybody makes this style hook. Uh, this is the VMC wacky hook. And I love this style hook. I'm going to take it off for a second to show you because of Look at the, the gap on that. You see the size of the gap, right? This isn't a drop shot, split shot hook that has a little gap. This is a wacky hook. Look at that wacky hook that has that bigger gap, okay? So a number one or a one-aught wacky hook, okay? I'm gonna tie that in line, traditional drop shot tie, right? Tie it in line so that hook point is facing up. And here's the key. You ready, guys? Listen to me. Very short down leader below it. Short down leader, okay? So, so key. Listen, this is key. Three to six, seven inches, four to eight inches in that range right there. That's five or six inch drop lead. That's all it is, okay? Short down lead. Last but not least, your weight, a 16th, an eighth, a 3 16th ounce, a lighter drop shot weight. This is a VMC teardrop, whatever tungsten drop shot weight you like. Okay, so one or one knot wacky hook, short leader, lighter tungsten weight, and there's that 90 gilly. Come on, man. Is that a baby bluegill? It is. A baby bluegill. And when I'm rigging it on this wacky hook on a spinning rod, I'm going to nose hook the ghillie. So I'm going to actually take my hook. I'm going to go through the chin of that 90 size ghillie, right through the chin, and I'm going to come out right out of the nose. And that leaves it in this very anatomically correct position. Okay, amazing, looks real. Let me show you the baitcaster next. I wanna show you that first, and then we'll get to uh, two hacks real quick and then how to fish it, okay? So that's spinning. Baitcaster, heavier line. I like a seven to a seven and a half foot medium heavy action rod. This is a seven foot medium heavy Abu Garcia Ike rod. Fast gear ratio reel. Spawning fish love to eat it, run off the bed with it, so I wanna pick up that slack. Something that's a seven to one or faster. This is an MGX Extreme, it's eight to one. Um, heavier line. When I'm fishing it on a casting rod, I'm generally using straight fluorocarbon, 15, to 20 pound line. Remember, now I'm fishing around dingier water. 
I'm around cover, heavy cover. So heavier line to compensate for that. But here's the deal, guys. Check it out. Same bait, same rig, just a little different, right? Because now I'm going to rig it. Uh, I'm going to rig it Texas style. Okay. So with our hook, instead of that wacky style hook, now we're going to go to a ringed extra wide gap VMC hook. Okay. We're going to go to a ringed extra wide gap VMC hook. But because this is the 90, we're going to use a slightly smaller ringed EWG hook. We're going to use a 2 aught. A 2 aught is the perfect size. It makes the bait all hook. A 2 aught uh, extra wide gap ringed hook. Okay? Then we're going to put our weight down here at the bottom. Once again, what do I say on the spinning rod? Same on the casting. Short down lead. Three, two, three to seven, eight inches at the max. This one might be a hair longer than that other one. Seven, eight inches. No more than that. Short down lead. Our tungsten weight. Now, because we have a bait caster, a little bit heavier line, slightly heavier weight, uh, a three sixteenths, a quarter, a five sixteenths. I really like the quarter ounce. And then, Last but not least, now we've got our 90 gilly, and instead of nose hooking it, we're going to side rig it. And all that means is do your normal Texas rig, go in the nose of the bait about an eighth of an inch, go right to that ring, and then now we're going to just sort of texpose that hook. And if you look at it, that hook now is going to lay flush with the body. I'll show you the back, what the back looks like. So it's Texas rigged, so it's weedless, right? Now we're around cover, it's weedless. But when that fish bites, watch this, ready? Poop. Look at that hook pop right out. See, it lays so nice, flat against that 90 gillies body, but when he bites, it pops out. I'll pull it back up and show you, look. That little side fin kind of conceals it. Okay, so same look as the spinning, except now we're, we're weedless. Okay? All right, I showed you spinning, I showed you casting. I'm gonna show you a couple hacks real quick, and then finally we'll get into the magic and how to work it. All right. This is a great hack no matter what bait you're throwing at a spawning fish. But when I'm fishing these 90 gillies, I always wanna add, you ready for this? Listen to me, I promise you it's gonna make a big difference. A little bit of red, a little bit of red. Uh, you can use the regular Spike It dye. Uh, you can use Spike It has a latex paint in red with a brush. But this is my favorite. This is just the Spike It Dipping Glow pen. It's a little marker. I love this because I can really color a smaller area and it, it's not messy at all. These things are not messy. So this is a um, fire red Spike It Dipping Glow pen. And so for hack number one, I don't care what color gilly you're using, I wanna put a little red at the, the, the mouth to throat of the bait, right? The, the head of the bait. So I'm gonna show you, there it goes. There's that gilly, that atomically correct. Look at the belly, it's got that light color. I'm gonna get my red spike it. And I wanna just show you, remember, listen guys, the whole thing's not red. I just wanna add a little pop of red. All right, look at there. Look at that, come on man, right? That little pop of red, something about that color on spawning fish. And when you add that little red chin or throat, to that bluegill, it really creates a focal point for those fish to want to bite it. That's the area, that's the area that they want to attack. It looks real, it looks like blood, it looks like they've been nipping at their eggs, they've been tearing the eggs up, there's blood. They hate it! And I love it by the chin because it's right at the hook. 
So that's where they're going to go. Okay, that was hack number one. Hack number two is adding sound to these baits. And, and remember, all these hacks I'm showing you, we can use them on the spinning or casting version, okay? So I want you to remember that gilly has a hollow spot in the back of the bait. Let me see if I can show it to you. It's a little hole in the back. Let me see if I can get it open for you, show you it. There it goes right there. It's gonna be hard to see it, but it has a little hole in the back of the bait. And the top of that gilly is actually hollow. It's hollow like a tube. So what I like to do is I like to get a rattle. Um, this happens to be a single bead, a single ball. This is called a tube rattle. A lot of companies make them. Uh, go to a uh, tackle warehouse has them on the accessory page, right? On the terminal tackle page. You can hear that nice single rattle. I like to add sounds to this system. And all we have to do with that tube rattle, it, it fits really nice is I just, I just wet it, I stick it in that hole. There's what it looks like, I'll show you what it looks like going in. See it going into the body? And then I just complete it and push it all the way. Look at that, it disappears! It disappears in there! Doesn't affect the action, and listen. Dude, something about that little, that the spawning fish cannot stand. So adding sound, hack number two, I'm going to give you one more hack and then we're finally going to get to the juice. How to fish it on the bed and why this bait is so good. But the last hack is occasionally, and, and you really want to play this one by ear, occasionally these fish really want this bait staying up off the bottom in their face, right? Think about those spawners. Sometimes, you know, it's better to, that it sort of falls real slow. I like that. You know, you're shaking it. We're going to see that in a second. And then you stop and it just sort of settles down to the eggs. That looks real natural. But occasionally, these fish want that bait staying up off the bottom. Well, guess what? We can make this gilly float, almost suspend right above the bed. Remember that hole I talked about? Look, there it goes again. The gilly's hollow, the top half of the bait's hollow. See that hole? There it goes, right? We're gonna use that same hole, and this time, if we want that bait to float, we're gonna use packing peanuts, for crying out loud. Dude, you've got a thousand of these. Every time you get a shipment, they come. Put them in a Ziploc. These are little styrofoam packing peanuts. And we're going to add this, we're going to add this to that hole to make this bait float. I like to, on the 90 gilly, I like to cut that thing in half. That's a regular a packing peanut. You can just get your finger, break it in half. The great thing about these peanuts is they're very moldable, right? So you could actually sort of use your fingers and I can squeeze it down. I actually want to just cut a little more off of that. There you go. I can use my fingers and really compress this down to get the air out of it. Same thing. Wet it a little bit. There's what it looks like gone in that hole. You see that? Looks like a piece of toilet paper on your shoe after you come out of the bathroom. Don't worry about it. Just push that packing peanut in that hole, pull it back out. Look at it. It's in there. It's expanding in there. It's getting air. So you, you, Compressed it down, but in there it's bulking back up. Rig it Texas style. Now when that bait lays in the bed, it's so buoyant with that styrofoam that it's gonna help that bait stay high up, float and suspend. And occasionally those bedding fish want that. So keep that in mind. Another good little hack for you. All right, let's get to the juice and why this bait is so good and how we're gonna fish it. And I said it at the beginning of this shot video, but I'm gonna say it again. That thing is the enemy of a spawning bass. That little bluegill, little sunfish, little warmouth, little brim, that's a nest raider. That's an egg pest. That's the thing that's stealing their eggs. And when that thing 
gets in the bed, they want to kill it. Imagine what that's looking like. You know, we talked about that short leader, and that's key because I don't want that thing too far up. I want it three, two to six, eight inches above the bed, right? And when I drag it into that bed, casting or spinning, I want to get that bait in there and I want to shake and pause. Shake and pause. I'll show you what it looks like real quick, right? So I'm visually, I see that bed, I know the area. I usually like to cast, I'll cast past the bed and then I bring that, I sort of drag that bait into that nest, yellow spot, depression, dish, dark spot. Different beds look different, different places you go. Once it gets in the bed, here's what I'm doing. You ready? Look, rod about one o'clock, one, two o'clock, shake, pause. Shake, pause. Spinning, casting, doesn't matter. Shake, pause. Dude, the great thing about a short leader drop shot as a rigging method is guess what? That bait stays in place. The weight stays in place. As you shake, the only thing moving is the bait. When you pause with, with the rattling version, slowly goes down just like it's gone down to eat an egg. On the floating version with the styrofoam, you shake and you pause and it kind of just sits there. They can't stand it, guys. Listen, I am self admittant I, I am not that good at spawning fish. This bait has made me a good sight fisherman because the action, what you're doing, shake, pause, the shape, the way it's oriented, that little bit of red, staying in the bed, staying in place, that fluidity of the bait, they cannot stand it. They cannot stand it, okay? Um, man, whatever you think about spawning fish, whatever you think, if you're having trouble catching them, you're trying, you can't do it, try this tip to catch spawning bass. This rig, the Gilly 90, short leader drop shot with some of them rigging tips will make those fish bite. Man, I hope you enjoyed this in the shop, man. If you like this stuff, do me a favor, stop, mash that subscribe button. See it right down there? Look, look, there it goes. Subscribe to my channel. Got great content coming to you every single week, a new piece. If you're already subscribed, tell your fishing friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you become a better fisherman, give you tips and techniques to help you catch more fish. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Bye.